Hey, how's it going guys? So in this video, um, we will be reviewing a plastic kayak. And this is a roto-molded plastic kayak. Uh, quite common in lower, more budget-friendly um, priced kayak range. So this one right now, brand new, it sells for I think 780 some dollars. Um, and it's free shipping. So if you're interested in a touring, almost seaworthy kayak, definitely give this one a consideration. And I haven't mentioned the model yet. This is a Brooklyn Kayak Company, SK287, okay? So this is designated as a touring kayak. Um, it's got quite a lot of actually useful and uh, um, very welcomed features and I'll go through them in this video it's not gonna be a paddling video um, I've owned this kayak for about two months I actually went on to about four trips in this kayak and uh, the more I take this kayak to the local canals and the local um, inshore waters the more I like it however after this video it will be sold to a another local gentleman uh, so he will continue to enjoy this kayak more. And again, as I mentioned, I bought this um, used and uh, this thing right now sells brand new for only $780. So it is, in my opinion, a great value, even if you buy it brand new, okay? Great value. Uh, because other kayaks that have similar specs, okay? So this one is 14.75. Uh, foot long so almost 15 foot and other kayaks that's designated as touring sea kayak online uh, you will most likely find them at the price range of around $1,200 and up and this one brand new okay right now on sale for $780 quite a no-brainer if you're looking for a kind of performance kayak on a budget you should definitely give this one a consideration because it's got dual bulkheads front and back and those bulkheads are actually sealed so you don't really need a extra pedal float for the uh, the main cockpit because again it's it's sealed very nicely so if it does flip in the unlikely event um, it will not get flooded with water and sink so you will still be able to get back in your cockpit and uh, use your bilge pump and pump out all the water and it should be uh, you should continue on your journey you know perfectly fine and uh, um, it's got the front uh, bungee cord area for stowing your, again, belch pump or your um, waterproof bags and stuff. And it's, again, those um, dual bulkheads, very nicely sealed with a heavy duty rubber right here, um, rubber cover. The back one is more of an elongated shape, so you could put some tent, some chairs, and other kind of a long stuff in here. Take a look inside the bulkhead. Okay, so plenty of space, and as you can see, it's completely sealed. Um, the method of se like sealing is uh, this is like a uh, like a high density foam, and it's being you know just gel glued around the edge so it doesn't leak. And what do you see here? The little two funny looking thing are actually fish rod holders. <laughs> now I wouldn't advise you go fishing on this quite narrow kayak. This kayak is only 22 inches wide. Um, so it is again, a touring kayak built for long distance and speed in mind. Um, so if you do want to fish, I would highly suggest go for a wider kayak if you go if you want to go sitting or just go get a sit on top that's even wider and longer uh, so you could enjoy the fishing experience or maybe even stand on top of the kayak this one don't even think about standing okay um, this is again a touring kayak when it comes to touring kayaks they they're usually not gonna be as wide as say a comfortable recreational kayak that one over here over there is a older model of Liquid Logic Stingray. This is a 12 foot uh, sitting kayak that's again built for recreational use. Large space, very wide. This is, I believe, I think 28 inch to 30 inch wide. 
Uh, I bought this for my wife. So she sits in here very comfortably. It's extremely stable. Again, any kind of white kayak is gonna be stable. So uh, really no issues there. Um, but as you can see, it doesn't have the front bulkhead. So you, you need to use a, um, a pad, uh, like a float uh, in here. Otherwise, if this takes on water, most likely it's gonna sink. It only have a half sealed, let me see if it's sealed, I can't remember. Yep, it's got a sealed uh, rear hatch over here. But again, with just one area, I don't think it's gonna have enough volume to stay afloat once you're taking water here, okay? So you definitely need a, 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 like, um, a float for the front part um, of this kayak. Now for this one, both front and back are nicely sealed over here. So you flip, you should still be able to flip back and get in here uh, quite safely. Hopefully you have a float bag, um, a pedal float for your kayak and you could put your pedal float over here and just do a self rescue and you should be back in the kayak, okay? The cockpit is a modern keyhole design. So quite nice, quite welcomed. Um, and again, as I mentioned, the hatch head is nice, good quality rubber. So you're not gonna likely lose it. And also it's got one of those things. So even if it pops up, you should still be able to have it, right? So quite nice. And you have on the back a, a pedal holder, bungee over here. So you put your bungee on the back uh, if you need to get in and get out really quickly. On top of that, you also have a pedal holder over here in the front. So you have quite a lot of options. Okay, so uh, perimeter safety lines from both the front and the back. Quite welcomed. So depending on how you want to get your re-entry, you could grab the front and go from here, or you could grab the back and, uh, um, and slowly slide to the front and getting back into your, your cockpit. Okay. Um, and uh, again, for for the price, even brand new, I would say this is probably your best value if you're looking for a you know touring kayak and if your budget is kind of limited or you don't really want to you know first commit to a two three thousand dollar dedicated sea kayak, you want to give it a try. This would be a good option for entry. Okay. Um, and again, the showing you some of the features. So this one features a adjustable for the rest. You just flip this and then you can, you know, push it in and out. And the footrest also controls, as you can see, there's a cable over here, a nicely designed rudder, uh, rudder on the back. The rudder, if you don't use it, you have a little bungee cord over here to hold it. So it doesn't pop back up like during transport. Uh, when you are ready to use it on the water, you pop this and the, the runner is controlled again like most other kayaks by a little nylon cord over here so you just loosen the nylon cord and and you just pull and it, it's gonna go down once it goes down you lock it okay obviously I can't do it with one hand but try to do it with one hand is hard but you could lock it right here and it locks into position now of course I didn't fully pull it because there's no water here so I'm gonna unlock it and when I unlock, it's spring-loaded, so I just lose this. As you can see, it drops back in here, okay? It just rests over there, and you can lock this again so it doesn't move around, right? So very nice, very nice, uh, fully featured kayak. The safety perimeter line is uh, quite thick. This is, feels like a six millimeter perimeter line, so it's easy to grab if you actually do need to grab it and get, get to uh, re-entry or if you need to just grab it and move it around. Also nice, they come with a nylon handle also for the building. This is a very comfortable nylon handle also and very easy to lift and move around. Um, nylon handle on the back. So this is the only part I don't like. This nylon handle is uh, in the way of the rudder. So it's kind of hard um, to, get, to get access to, but you can still just grab it on the side and lift the back side up if you need to. The rudder is very easily removable. It's uh, it's secured by this one pin over here. Okay, 
So if you remove that pin, and uh, um, it's gonna, uh, you can lift the rudder up, and if you un untie all the cables, you could remove the rudder altogether. Now I wouldn't suggest doing that because this kayak, um, while I'm in kind of an inshore situation near the ocean or in the ocean, um, it is it is it is prone to um, I think they call it weather cocking. So the weather cocking is when there's wind or there's wave, the kayak actually kind of just tries to um, change its direction and go with where the wind is blowing, uh, which is quite annoying. So you definitely, you definitely want this rudder uh, anytime there's wind because the wind will blow this kayak around and it's kind of hard to pedal. Um, However, if you do get used to how to adjust your position, you know, in, in relation to the wind, you don't really need the rudder. Um, <clears throat> but comparing this with that, you have no rudder and your kayak is wide. Um, this one is much easier to control in sort of uh, like a bigger water scenario, like in a big lake um, or, you know, there's, uh, there's wind. Um, this kayak will easily be much easier to control compared to a kayak recreational kayak that doesn't have any amenities and it's a lot wider so you would say this is a excellent option as a backup sea kayak touring sea kayak and also a great option for a budget touring kayak and this actually sits in between kind of like uh, your very like entry level recreational kayak that you can probably get used for around you know two three hundred dollars uh, between that and a high-end full full-on composite sea kayak that's 16 and 17 foot or even longer um, this thing actually does 90% of a fancy high-end kayaks job for probably 60 70 percent less of the money it does pretty much the same thing in terms of speed um, this kayak again by itself is actually quite heavy it's claimed to be 44 pounds without any of the accessories without the hatch cover without you know the the rudder the kayak itself is 44 pounds however uh, with all those accessories when I lift it I know this is definitely over definitely over 55 pounds probably even like 60 pounds and up it's not it's not light so if if you only have one kayak to carry around I would suggest get a kayak rack for uh, for this kayak or like a car kayak roller put on bottom if you have long distance to cover you definitely want that thing to make your life much easier it's also a little bit tougher to get on top of the cars compared to my 12 foot the 12 foot is only like 40 pounds a little more than 40 pounds so very very light very easy to get on my car this one requires a lot more effort if you're an older you know gentleman or if you're an older lady um, your physical strength is kind of limited I wouldn't suggest getting this you might want to spend more money on a, uh, a ABS plastic kayak which is lighter um, or you spend maximum amount of money and get a carbon Kevlar composite kayak that's around 40 pound range you know less than 50 pounds it's much easier to handle compared to this one so you know that's where your money goes your money goes to the amenities your money goes to the added rudder for convenience your money goes to the sealed bulkheads in this budget kayak uh, what your money doesn't go is the added weight right that's the only downside that I can find in this kayak is the weight the weight uh, for transport um, it's just you know it's kind of killing me um, but other than that this is a fantastic kayak I'm able to go up to five miles per hour um, if I'm using maximum amount of effort and if I'm you know changing my low volume pedal to a high volume pedal I might even go faster but that's probably the maximum I would go again I'm kind of middle age I'm going to 40 you know years old so uh, that's why I'm at I'm not super fit but I'm, I'm you know able to ride my bikes long distance and I'm able to pedal you know seven eight miles um, in the lake and on the uh, on the inshores so that's where I'm at and I'm able to use this kayak efficiently 
for me to lift this on top of my car, it's kind of hard, okay? Again, weight is its only downside. Um, other than that, if you're fit, if you're young, if you're energetic, this kayak is gonna, you know, you're gonna have a lot of fun in this kayak. And uh, with all the amenities on this kayak, you just cannot go wrong. Even if, again, if you buy it new for $780 and it's free shipping, ship to your door, it's great value. I'm selling this kayak. Um, I bought this kayak used from the gentleman, again, a couple months ago for about $600. And now I'm selling it at almost half the price of the money I bought it. So whoever's getting this is getting a great deal and it's gonna have a lot of fun on this kayak. Um, but I want to make this video to tell you what exactly you're gonna expect um, when you buy this kayak. Even if you buy it new, I would say it's a great value. If you haven't paddled on a narrow kayak before, you might feel quite a lot scared. It's very unstable the moment you sit down here, the first time you pedal this kayak. As I said, after the first time, the second time gets quite a lot easier. On my second time sitting on this kayak, I was still not able to comfortably look back in this kayak because every time I try to look back, I kind of lose my balance. So it's really scary looking back on the kayak. However, third time, fourth time, looking back is no issue and I am very comfortably able to edge the kayak, um, you know, by turning my body and then looking back on the kayak. It's just a lot of fun. So don't be scared if you want to go see kayak, touring kayak. It's, it's going to be a lot more it's gonna be a lot more fast it's you're gonna carry a lot more equipment for longer trips and uh, um, it's gonna be a lot more efficient compared to a chunky wide uh, short recreational kayak so really depends on what you want you feel like if you're currently on a recreational kayak you feel like you want to advance your level you want to go a little further you want to go a little more efficient give the SK287 a consideration um, if you're on a sit top, sit on top and you kind of want a sitting, um, this would be a, a small challenge at the very beginning. However, once you get used to it, it's a lot of fun. And uh, maybe at one moment you even want to upgrade to a composite. Once you feel like you have outgrown this sea kayak, this sea touring kayak, you want a composite, then it's perfect because you're gonna be right at home with the fancy, more expensive composite and you know exactly what you're gonna expect. Except that composite is gonna be a lot more smooth, a lot more rigid, so you have more control, you have less wasted energy, and that composite um, is gonna bring a lot more joy as opposed to, you know, immediately switching from a recreational kayak to a full composite. Uh, this would serve as an excellent, excellent transition. So I also want to show you guys how the uh, <clears throat> the kayak rudder works on this uh, SK287. Um, quite simple operation. Okay, so again, I'm gonna actually get the kayak to one of the positions. I'm gonna not I'm not gonna fully engage it to, you know, touching the bottom. But I'm gonna actually just engage the kayak by again losing the string a little bit and just start pulling. Okay, I'm gonna actually lock it right there. So once you have a the rudder kind of locked into a position um, the rest of the control is all done by the foot over here so if you push one of the foot on the top the cable drags the kayak I'm not gonna push it I'm just gonna drag the cable and then you guys can see the difference see that's how it moves around so um, <clears throat> very easy to control right and if you look here, let's see, this moves. So you can see, this is how you control the kayak um, during a very windy situation or if you want to use the rudder. Once you finished using the rudder or you don't want to use it anymore, make sure you rest it at the center position before you pull, otherwise it's gonna drop onto some random stuff. So again, you loosen this and you just uh, again continue losing the rudder and it's gonna rest into the position over there now personally again i don't like to use rudder i can just you know edge myself out of the um 
the wingy situation and I adjust with the direction just using my pedal. Um, some people, they swear by the rudder. So uh, again, this kayak is nice to have it. But again, I personally don't really use it, but I just want to show you guys how the rudder operates. And it's, it's quite easy. Um, not my thing, but it's there, okay? And so that's uh, pretty much it. So it's again, a beautiful sea kayak for an amazing price and uh, if you guys are interested in getting a touring kayak on a budget this is a no-brainer okay in in the united states of course um very beautifully constructed and it looks sleek it's it's roto molded um and you don't have to worry about you know getting scratched or whatever because like small scratches for roto molded kayak is nothing uh, if you ever decide to upgrade to a composite, you have to be a lot more careful because the composites are much more rigid, a lot more easier to be scratched and a lot more easier to be damaged and, you know, and dented. So yeah, this will be again a backup, a great backup for a beater touring kayak or it could be a great transition kayak if you want to try out touring sea kayak without spending three, four thousand dollars on a much more fancy kayak all right um, i hope you guys found this video helpful if you did please do hit the, the like button or subscribe to my channel and uh, um, i will have more kayaking related videos coming out for you guys